liberty and justice for all. My partner, Danny Lindau, who always helps out with the four white pest, is absent today. So I'll have to do this all by myself with your help. Let's all join together with the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And people sit down if they do not have a guest, is that correct? All right. If you do not have a guest or if you are not a visiting Rotarian, Please sit down, and the rest of you folks stand up, and we'll work in this direction from the camera on back. Okay, you guys look at the. Okay, I have two guests today. I'm delighted to say the first, my first woman is right here, Constance Holden, who many of you know. My second woman today is Linda Ricketson from the Community Foundation. She is the VP of Philanthropic Services. Please welcome these two ladies. Thank you. Um, I'm pleased to introduce again my guest, Lee Abner, who came with me. Yeah, they want oh. you right there on that camera. <laughs> Lee Abner. Uh, Lee has been a family friend for many, many years. You may remember that her career for years was in uh, policy areas in Washington. She moved to Boulder many, many years ago, closer to family. and. Uh, She's a friend of our speaker today and here uh, with interest to listen to what uh, we will be hearing at our, our talk. Our, yes, thank you. Thank you. Gary. I have uh, two guests today. Uh, by coincidence, both of them are former Boulder Rotarians uh, and are coming back to see the new Boulder Rotary. Uh, first is uh, Mark Stern. Uh, he's a uh, retired physician, emergency room, and uh, medical director, and uh, uh, and Michael Chapman, who uh, Michael uh, it was. Uh, for those of you who remember him, he was at the scooter table in his bicycle thing because he always rode his bike to to Boulder Rotary, and uh, he's here to he both both of them here this here the speaker today. Thank you, Gary. So my guest again is my wife, Carol Simpson, uh, the pastor in visitation at uh, Pine Street uh, Church and a multiple time Paul Harris Fellow. Here you go, Janet. I have two guests today. The first is my very dear friend, Judy Hartley. Uh, Judy's a third generation Boulderite. Her grandfather, Walter Franklin, uh, helped found Boulder Rotary, and her father, Pete Franklin, was very much engaged in Boulder Rotary, and Judy and I share many interests together. I also have as my friend today, Dr. Jean Abbott. Dr. Jean Abbott is a retired emergency room physician and now serves as a consultant in medical ethics as well as palliative care across the United States and is the head of the Ministry of Last Things at First Congregational Church. And Jean is also, Tom, Tom Stiers and I work with the Ministry of Last Things, as well as my husband, Carl Kurtz, and so we work very closely with Jean on many different things. So, thank you. Scoot in behind you here. Here you go. Hi, guess what? Introducing Judy really paid off. She's already turned in all her papers and she's ready to be one among us. So Judy's back, I'd like to have you uh, say, you're really glad she's here kind of thing. So she'll stay <laughs> joining. Um, another is a friend of Judy's, Margie Sullivan, and she's lived in Boulder for 30 years. She is a former high-tech marketing professional and now spends her time as an artist, so she's kind of yin-yang. So would you greet her, please? For us? Thank you. 
And then um, Cinda was going to pick up the students today and couldn't make it, so I ha got to do that after I did that probably, what, seven or eight years, and it was great fun to go over to New Vista and pick up these two guys who are going to just say a little bit about um, themselves. And so it's Ezra and Ruka. Hi, my name is Ezra Kirshner. Um, I'm currently a senior over at New Vista, and this is really the first that I've ever learned about Rotary, so I'm excited to see what it's all about. Hi, I'm Luca Volmar. I also go to New Vista. Um, I'm excited to learn about Rotary. We got the opportunity, and we both jumped at the opportunity. Thank you. And Michael. I always wanted to be the person who introduced Judy Hartley. And Gail Mock and I are going to be royally upset. My guest today, Mr. Clay Evans, a friend an acquaintance uh, throughout many years, an esteemed writer, Boulder raised, and I believe uh, possibly Boulder born, and also a friend of today's speaker. So, thank you. Are there any visiting Rotarians that we have missed? Any other guests that we've missed? Thank you, and come back again next week. It's going to be a fantastic Valentine's Day presentation. Great. Thank you, Gene. Thank you. And welcome to everyone. Big uh, welcome to our guests. Uh, thank you for coming today. So a couple of announcements before we move on to our first item. The first one is the journals uh, came a little late, so Pam would like you to pick them up before you leave. So do not leave if you're part of the journaling program without picking up your journal. Uh, the next thing is uh, see Carrie McIlvain. Where's Carrie? Raise your hand. There she is in the back there waving. Uh, see her if you want to pick up your Boulder Dinner Theater tickets. This is um, for February, or for Valentine's Day, and we had 40 tickets, 45 of you wanted to go, so we had to buy extra ones, but they're all sold, but she's got the tickets, and so uh, it's gonna be a great evening, and hopefully you're one of those 45 people. Uh, two months ago, we updated the bylaws, and the clubs voted on them, and one of the things inside that bylaw is a, a request of the board of directors to come up with a sexual harassment policy and plan. And I'm here to say that we have done that. Um, hopefully this, we want this to be a safe and fun environment for everyone. And hopefully this is a plan that uh, never is implemented, never needs to be needed. Um, when an incident happens, many times the leader of an organization is doing the best that they can. Um, he or she is working in uncharted territory many times. and so. We, um, the board proactively thought about all the issues and have tried to come up with uh, answers in a very thoughtful manner towards some kind of an incident and how that might, might, uh, might play out for the benefit of all. Um, they had to balance some conflicting needs, the needs for privacy, the needs for transparency, and I think they've done a really good job. We have some copies here at the table that you can pick up on your way out. Um, look through it. If there's any questions, any concerns, anything, just email me or give me a call. If it's a long uh, question, I'd rather you call me so I don't have to read a four-page email. Just saying. <laughs> um, so just give me a call. This is um, part of the policy as well, is we ask for a handful of members who are committed to really knowing the, uh, the policy and are committed to, uh, to listening to all sides so that they can help if something ever comes up for a recommendation to the board of directors. The board of directors are always the, the final decision. So um, if you'd like to be considered as one of those handful of people, please email me or talk to me after the meeting. Uh, the board has asked for, um, for some recommendations so that they can appoint those uh, handful of people. Okay, so uh, be sure to grab a copy if you would like and look at it and uh, you'll see that a lot of thought and hard work has been put into it. And a lot of people behind the scenes over the last year have contributed thoughts and ideas. Just want to, uh, the board specifically wanted to identify a couple of people who have put in countless hours in the last three or four months. And uh, Deborah Kelly and Cassidy Murphy, they did an uh, outstanding job bringing us for our club. So, 
That being said, uh, we, we are 100 years as a club in our community this year, and every year we have a vignette, a chapter in our story, in our history, and this year, this, uh, this week, we have Sue talking about red badges. Come on up. Thank you, Mike. While I was writing this, I decided that somebody needs to come up with a graphic illustration of a red badger because it just, I kept thinking of an animal, but anyway. Um, let me mention also that on Sunday, Sylvia Petham, who is the history columnist for the Daily Camera, has written a column about our centennial, and it should be published on, I always say it should be published on Sunday because sometimes things go wrong, but that's what we're told. So you might want to look for that in the Daily Camera. Rotarians can be crotchety, even though they're such nice people. In 1994, the RIB reported, the problem is as old as Rotary itself. All of us tend to sit with the same folks week after week, <laughs> leaving our new members spread around the distant fringes. It's kind of hard to get acquainted that way. It was even worse 40 years before that, the RIB said. A group of old timers sat along the back wall of Wayne's Cafe, where the club oh met then, in precise order. Should you inadvertently try to sit in their midst, you might either be informed that they were saving that particular chair for someone else, or else you were glared at until you moved voluntarily. <laughs> Later, in the 1990s, according to our own Rocky Margolis, Jim Marlin brought the idea for the Red Badge Program, or New Member Integration Program, as it's formally called, from his previous club in Nebraska. The, the, at the time, Boulder's Rotary's three newest members, who were Norma Ekstrand, Rocky, and Carl Scott, attended its first meeting in 1997. All of them are still in the club, and I think all of them may be here today. Jim appointed Rocky as the first red badge chair. The new members wore distinctive red badges for their first six months in the club. The first Red Badge Society meeting featured Jack Rummel talking about the Rotary Foundation. The Red Badgers met in the back room of the Buff restaurant where the group still meets to this day, except the restaurant has moved across the street now. Contrary to what some members think, a red badge does not indicate a probationary period. Red Badgers are members from their first introduction to the club. During their first six months, they're urged to attend monthly meetings on the first Wednesday of the month at 7.15 a.m. at the Buff. This is an invaluable way to learn more about Rotary and what we do. And old members, myself included, learn a lot from these meetings too. So look for a red badger and be sure to sit with them. Thank you. And this past Wednesday, I have to say, we had 31 people at, uh, put in that little room in the buff. I think that was a record in recent memory. So uh, good job to Jim Umlin and Charlotte um, as our co-chairs of the red badge. So why don't you come on down? My job is to speak about the Rotary Foundation, but I first want to start with a kind of a simple look at the structure of Rotary, which is going to come up on a slide momentarily. But think of it in three pieces. The clubs, with 35,000 clubs worldwide. Rotary International, 1.2 million members in over 200 countries. That's more countries than the UN is in. And lastly, the Rotary Foundation. Last uh, fiscal year, we collected $400 million uh, from mostly dues and contributions. That money goes to Evanston Cooks for three years. What do I mean by Cooks? They just sit on it and take the interest and dividends to support operations. In the most recent year, $280 million was distributed in two ways. As you can see on the slide, the district designated funds and the global grants. It splits 50-50. 
Now you may say, well, why is it 280 when we took in 400? Well, the 280 is from three years ago, so it cooks for three years before it becomes available for grants. So next, I want you to take a little look at how Rotary operates. So Rhodey is about doing good in the world. So I invite you to consider becoming a participant in giving to Rotary. There's a couple ways to do that. You can do that with the annual fund, or you can pick one of the designated. We have six areas of focus plus polio. I think this is an organization that you can be very proud to be a member of. When you see the kind of work and you learn more about the work that's being done throughout the world, we are a very unique organization. So the easy way to participate is via Rotary Direct. You can have it come out of a bank account, a credit card, I have the forms, Wendy has the forms, and I invite you to join with many of the rest of us in the joy of Rotary doing good in the world. Thank you. Yeah, this has been a unique year in that we haven't really spoken that much about the Rotary Foundation. We've been, for the last six, seven months, we've been so focused on our 100th year anniversary and our own club foundation. But the Rotary Foundation is just incredible. And, um, you know, and hopefully within a few years, we will have eradicated polio from the planet. And that's incredible. We're just so close. Now, you might be wondering why I'm wearing these red shoes, okay? These are called Stomp Out Polio Shoes. So you can buy these for $75. You just Google Stomp Out Polio. And for every shoe that you, you know, pair of shoes that you buy, $55 goes towards the Polio Plus. And it gets matched two for one from the Gates Foundation. So $160, you buy these shoes. And if you don't want to wear them, which I think you should, but if you don't want to wear them, Give them to your grandkids or your kids. They make a great, great present. I know there's a lot of bankers, a lot of uh, attorneys here. If any of you wear these shoes with your suit to the courtroom or so, <laughs> take a picture and I'll donate an extra hundred hours because I think that would be really oh. funny. Okay, so do that and I'll do that. <laughs> okay, John Sullivan. There you go. Come on up, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, per section one of our bylaws, I am going to announce the nominees for the Boulder Rotary Club Board of Directors and the president-elect for the third and final time before the election, which will occur next Friday. And if you would, as I announce your name, please stand up and be recognized. Janet Beardsley, director nominee. Chris Coker, Director Nominee. <laughs> Willie Kneerum, Director Nominee. <laughs> Jean Lindeke, Director Nominee.
Henry Hank Lopez, director nominee. There you are. Andy Meyer, director nominee. Charlotte Rome, director nominee. Alessandro Sachs, director nominee. And our nominee for president-elect is the incomparable Sally Brown. So, um, as I said, the election is next Friday. If you're not gonna be here for some reason and can't vote in person, that's okay. We will have uh, voting by email. There will be details in the rib, and in all likelihood, those details will say something to the effect of, send your four nominee names to our club secretary uh, at secretary at boulderrotary.org. And um, if you haven't checked the rib, the, the, um, there were bios and pictures of all the nominees in the rib as well, and there will be next week. Thank you. So elections next week. Uh, Michael McHale, what's that? Okay. You're correct. Yep. Come on up. Nom any nominations from the floor? Okay, thank you. Very good. If, uh, so, uh, get your raffle tickets out, because I have the number. Well, this means nothing to you because it's white, but yours is red, I think. So pull your, pull your raffle ticket out because I have the winning number right here and you might leave here richer. Okay, 827-5461. 5461, who's got it? Someone over there is happy. So, great. Michael McHale, why don't you come on up and introduce our speaker. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Okay, moving on in the meeting, uh, we have uh, Gary Kahn and Fred Bretman. Would you mind coming up? We have a red badge for you. Now we all know what the red badge is about. Same with uh, Sue and Sharon. Would you guys mind coming up as well? There you go, sir. Thank you. It's uh, really a privilege today to introduce you all if you haven't had a chance to meet Fred Bratman yet to uh, our newest member and I've known Fred for about 18 months but I've gotten to know him a lot better in the last few months as he's come to Rotary and been joined the uh, Rotary hiking group I learned things about Fred such as the fact that he's his parents are both Holocaust survivors and uh, we're both first-generation Americans and um, so professionally, Fred has more than three decades of communication experience with a specialization in message development. He's worked uh, at a very high level as a journalist for uh, the first part of his career, um, having uh, worked at Time Life, McGraw-Hill, Dial Jones. His works appear in uh, New York Times, Time Magazine, The Spectator of London. His stories covered a wide range of topics, including breaking general and financial news to profiles and book reviews. It rhymes. Hmm. <laughs> uh, he's, he was extremely well prepared for this uh, through his education, including the City University of New York, the London School of Economics, a graduate training at the uh, Columbia University in journalism, and even a year of fellowship at the uh, Yale University School of Divinity. Uh, he also, by the way, in his journalism career, uh, w w had written several books and nonfiction books for young readers. So, uh, uh, and, and in addition to this, he's led the communication activities for UJA Federation in New York, which is a very large philanthropic organization where he developed and implemented the communications uh, strategies for educating and activating their donor base. So, but Fred uh, shifted his professional focus from journalism to the financial communications 
working in with uh, several companies, and finally with uh, the uh, United Rentals, which is a very large equipment rental organization in New York, where he became the senior vice president uh, and uh, retired from that job in 2016, but continues to help the company with their communications and investor relations. Um, his, uh, uh, his partner is uh, Martha Olson, who's a former attorney, educational administrator, and a reform advocate. In fact, she was responsible for initiating the Amendment 73, which is to fund higher education in, in, uh, as a ballot initiative, and unfortunately uh, didn't pass, but hopefully another round it will. So uh, they came to Boulder from New York City about two and a half years ago and uh, fell in love with the whole Colorado and Boulder lifestyle. So they decided they'd move here, and I'm really thankful that they did. They share five grown children and a 15-year-old uh, labradoodle named Magic, who also fell in love with Colorado. <laughs> Please and, uh, welcome John and get to know him. You'll be glad you did. John, John, Fred, <laughs> John too, whoever that is. <laughs> so I'm proud to introduce my friend Sharon Niels, who's getting her blue badge today. Sharon is a retired language arts teacher from Boulder Valley Schools. She continues her interest in literacy through her yearly revision of her book, What's New in Young Adult Novels and Ideas for Classroom Use, and her blog about the use of YA books in the classroom. As co-chair of the Colorado Blue Spruce Young Adult Book Award Committee, she helps facilitate an annual student-generated award for YA authors. After serving on the board of the Dairy Arts Center for nine years, Sharon continues to chair the ad hoc programming committee for the Bodecker Art House Cinema at the Dairy, and she is also the co-chair of the film committee for the Conference on World Affairs. She joined Rotary in the hopes of contributing to Rotary's education-related efforts and to further her connection with service-oriented people in the community. Came to the right place. Since joining Rotary, Sharon has become involved with the Programming Committee and the Peaceful Schools Initiative. She will be helping with the Spelling Bee on February 23rd, and she is also interested in the Rotation Day Committee and the Wine to Water fundraiser. She loves the Friday luncheons and lectures and meeting fellow Rotarians who are so welcoming. Okay, what's next? What's next? Um, before we go into the birthdays, I just want to give you an update on the Imagination Library. In the last two weeks, you have sponsored 51 out of the 66 kids. So big, big round of applause for yourself. There you go. And two very generous donations by Michael Weatherwax and Dave Allen. So uh, thank you guys for, for that big donation as well. All right. So, George, birthdays. I'd like to share, you, uh, share with you my poem about a living will. I lay back in my lounger in front of my widescreen TV. I was ready for the football game that started about three. I asked my daughter to bring me a beer. I was ready for the play. Then I read there in the paper that a friend had passed away. He had had a stroke five years ago and slowly wasted away. He laid there in a coma and died just yesterday. He didn't have a living will, kept alive by IV lines, and he had died way too soon, long before his time. I turned and said to my daughter before it got too late that I never want to live in a vegetative state, 
surrounded by some big machine and fluids from a jug. If that ever happens to me, I want you to pull the plug. So when you see me laying there, kind of like a blob, I want you to have the courage and really do the job. She nodded she would do it. In her eye, I saw a tear. Then she got up, unplugged the TV, and took away my beer. <laughs> I think we have just uh, one birthday boy today, and it's Michael Brady. So I'm standing down here near the birthday table so you know where it is when it's your birthday because you get to talk before the whole, cl whole club. And so finally, I get to talk before the whole club. This is great. Now, it's not just my birthday. Uh, my wife, Cassidy, stand up, Cassidy. She turned 50 a couple of months ago, and I turned 50 this past Wednesday. Now, this is our 100th year uh, of Boulder Rotary here in our community. And after all the guests and visitors, there's always an announcement of a couple ways that you can celebrate our 100 years. But it's incomplete, because we looked through it, and we could not find anywhere in there where it says, arrange your birth and find a spouse also who's arranged her birth so that the sum of your ages add up to 100 years, okay? We've done it. Whew. So that's our 100 years of goodness right here. And uh, if there's any question whether we love this club and are committed to the club, um, there is no question. Um, <laughs> We, uh, we are very proud to be a part of this community, and we're proud that uh, the people that we associate with are of such high caliber that they make us better people. So uh, thank you very much for having us in the club. Happy birthday. Be sure and sit at the birthday table on your birthday or around your birthday. Thanks. Great. We've got a video. Is that right? A couple videos. returns and guests and thank you for being here today. Rotary, that was my team this past weekend. Have you joined Club 1919 yet? These four people have. Wait, honey, that's the Stams. Exactly. They've joined. How about you? Hey, and don't miss the gala. Get your tickets now from Kitty to Kiefer. <laughs> don't forget that February is Peace and Conflict Resolution Month. The Rotary Club of Boulder is a Rotary Action Group Peace Builder Club and the largest club in District 5450. Interested in recipes from around the world? Get your International Youth Exchange cookbooks now. Hey, Literacy Committee. Are there any kids left that need to be adopted for the Imagination Library? Really? Well, heck, we could do that after the meeting. Join us for the next Mental Health Series Lecture, which will be held on Monday, February 18th at 6.30 p.m. at the JCC. The title is Emerging Innovations in Mental Health Care. Flower Power. Well, Boulder Valley Rotary Club is hoping to find four to five drivers to deliver flowers to retirement homes on Monday, February 18th from 8.15 to 9.30. Details are in the rib if you're interested. Flower Power. Rotarian. Can you use that in a sentence, please? The Rotarians will be volunteering on February 23rd for the Spelling Bee at Platt Middle School. Contact Norris for more details. 
And the next Rotary Happy Hour is Tuesday, February 26th from 4 to 6 at 740 Front Street in Louisville. Formerly Ye Old Louisville Inn at the site of the John Bro statue, who was one of the most friendly men in East County. Look him up if you don't know. Join us for next week's program. One. The Boulder Timberliners. Two, we will be three, featuring a barbershop quartet. Four, five, six. That's a lot of quartet there. That was a really good show. Say it with us now. Have, Have a, a great, great weekend. weekend. Yeah. Okay, final announcement is to pick up your journals on the way out. Don't forget, don't do, is that good, Pam? I got you twice today. I, yeah, yeah, journals, outdoor, got it. Okay, I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped bring uh, this meeting uh, together. Michael Weatherwax is our past president and greeter. Red Badge greeter was uh, Carrie McElvain. Uh, Glenn, Alessandro, and Judy Pitt were here at the, uh, the table checking you in. And uh, Dan Shear helped us out with the raffles, and the raffles support our scholarships. So uh, thank you for making the meeting come together. Thank you for being today, and have a wonderful weekend. Meeting adjourned.